Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Katherine Schifferdecke. I'm Joy J. Moore. And welcome to another year of the Narrative Lectionary. We're glad that you are along for the ride. Uh, and uh, this is the year of Luke. We'll get to that, of course, uh, sometime in December. But our first uh, Sunday is September 8th, and we have Genesis 2 and 3 selected verses. So fun fact, um, Genesis 3, the so-called fall story, does not occur in um, some other lectionaries, uh, in part, I suppose, because it's got sort of a bad reputation uh, in the modern with modern sensibilities. But we're going to take on at least the first eight verses today. Um, this is the so-called second creation story in Genesis 2, but a reminder that there are also creation stories or passages, more like poems, in uh, couple of them in Job, uh, one in Psalm 104. So a friend of mine when asked, uh, what do you believe about uh, creation? Often says, I believe uh, everything the Bible says about creation, Genesis 1, Genesis 2, Job 38, Psalm 104, John 1, uh, lest people get bogged down in thinking there's only two creation stories. I love this creation story, and especially I love the start of it, where you get the story of tilling and keeping, that humanity as a whole has a calling from God to till and to keep. Here it's the garden, but we can extrapolate it to all creation. And these are important words in Hebrew. The first one really means to serve. And the second one, keep, that's the word till, to serve. And the second one means to guard or protect and so I'd like to compare it to Genesis 1. In Genesis 1, humanity is sort of the crown of creation and has noble, noble uh, calling there to, um, what are the words, uh, uh, Catherine or Joy, in Genesis 1? To have dominion and... Mm -hmm. um, subdue. And, right? And to yeah. subdue, right? These are really highfalutin words, but here, very humble. Uh, very common, so that it's really a nice balance. Yeah, uh, I that's a that's an important an important verse, I think, especially in our age of ecological trouble. But uh, yeah, to till uh, avad, a very common Hebrew word, what you could say to work the land, uh, but it does have the connotation of serving, and to keep it, it's the same as in. Um, you know the Lord, the Lord bless you and keep you, right? Uh, the Lord make His face shine on you, or uh, um, and and with a vod when Joshua says, "Choose this day whom you will serve." As for me and my household, we will avad, we will serve the Lord, we will, uh, and that's that first word there translated in the NRSV to till it. So, yeah, really important, as you say, Ralph. Uh, humble words. I think if you put this creation story together with the first one you get a really interesting anthropology, right? Because in the first creation story in Genesis 1, we're made in the image of God uh, as male and female in community. We're made in the image of God. Here we're made from the, the dust of the earth, the fertile, fertile soil of the earth, I think is a better translation, and called to, to serve and to, uh, and to keep the earth. So uh, really interesting. Uh, there's a great sermon right there, right? Who are we? Well, we're both... Uh, made in the image of God and filled with God's own spirit, God's own breath, and we come from the earth. So we're somewhere in between there. I really appreciate that um, uh, introduction uh, as uh, we're moving into this. Uh, we use language that sounds as if uh, there's a first story and a second story that they uh, we've been trained to look at the uh, uh, the way that these stories are different from one another. Um, and yet uh, there's a fullness, there's a richness in the language that you've given us today, Rolf, uh, where we, we move from that dominion to uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, I thought I had another D word there, but uh, to the humility. Uh, we move from the, the highfalutin to the, uh, to the humility. Uh, and and in, in all of that, 
what we have, like we have the four Gospels in the New Testament, we have several expressions of the promise of the Creator God to uh, enable a community called human to be the, the holiness of God in flesh to continue the creation project. And when we look at it is that we're entering in this fall, we're entering into this reading, and we have to, uh, as um, uh, students of Scripture, to allow the fullness of the narrative to, to speak to us, um, but also uh, to come at it with the excitement of, I know what I remember from last time, but there's something new that I can capture and will I allow it to be a living word for me this time around? That's really helpful. Um, we're suggesting, uh, I, I forgot to say this at the start, that uh, that the first five weeks of uh, the fall here could come under the theme of promising beginnings. Uh, and then you see also then a, a, a continued theme of God's faithfulness to the creation that God has that created and God's... Um, desire to redeem the creation from its brokenness. The story here then that uh, continues as we go into chapter three is the story uh, that's, that's often called the fall. Uh, people in my tradition actually prefer to talk about it as a rebellion upwards from, rather than a fall downwards because the human beings are here in this story, they are placed at the place of duty. Maybe that's the corresponding D. So Genesis 1, domain, dominion. And here you've got, you're, you're a being of duty. Um, and they don't like that. They want to be like God. So that the, the, the serpent says, um, you won't die if you eat the fruit. God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. And the human beings do no good from evil, but here's the tragedy of human nature. Knowing good from evil, right from wrong, does not come along with the capacity to choose the good and the right over the wrong or the evil. And so we are beings who do know at least some of what's good, but we choose wrong. Yeah. And obviously, I think, as as Ralph said at the beginning, uh, this story comes with a lot of baggage, right? especially for women, uh, you know, because it's been interpreted over the millennia, really, as uh, and uh, by by many, many uh, uh, theologians and biblical scholars and such as uh, it's been interpreted as uh, an indictment of women, right, that women ate the fruit or Eve ate the fruit, and so uh, she's the cause of original sin and passes that down. It, 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 try to set that baggage aside as you preach this. Uh, it's important to note in relation to that that uh, she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate, right? Like it's not, he, he Adam seems to be right there beside Eve uh, when uh, when the serpent is addressing her, or at least when she reaches out to take the fruit, uh, and and so he eats as well. And the eyes of both were opened, and they knew they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together. But I think that you know, instead of talking about the uh, male versus female, I think the idea uh, that you were just saying, Rolf, of uh, humanity's tendency to. <laughs> sin, right? Humanity's tendency to want what we don't have, to uh, uh, to want to be who we're not, uh, to, to want to be like God. Uh, I think that's something that everyone can understand, that human tendency. I, we don't, we haven't included this verse in the, um, in the readings, but of course, as always, you are welcome to add or delete uh, verses as you like. But in uh, uh, verse 11, uh, when God says to uh, Adam and Eve, uh, uh, you know, where, uh, where are you? Uh, Adam responds, I heard the sound of you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And God responds, who told you that you were naked? And then in Hebrew, it's uh, something along the lines of the tree that I told you not to eat of it 
you ate? <laughs> like the one thing I told you not to do, <laughs> that's what you did. Uh, and uh, of course, that's what happens, right? It's this this human tendency, and we see it in children. We see it in adults too, right? The the one thing that we're asked to do, uh, we don't do. I think about Paul's lament, really, in uh, in in the New Testament. You know, I do the things I don't want to do, and the things that I want to do, I don't do. Uh, this is the human condition, uh, and this story describes that human condition of sin and even more importantly, describes God's faithfulness to God's promises.